<coughs> oh, we are ready. Now, <clears throat> we saw, what we did yesterday is, uh, two days ago, Monday, is we started with a chemical equation. And uh, equations, of course, represent real reactions that take place. What I like about stoichiometry, this stoichiometry, is that that's what the real world uses out there. If they're making any kind of chemical, whether it's a, a medicine or whatever, they have people doing these calculations and they have to try to figure out how much of this is going to react with how much of this. Because if you, if it says 100 grams of that will only react with 363 grams of that, what if your company keeps putting 500 grams of that in there? Then they keep wasting things, don't they? Now, another company will eventually figure out how to not waste as much material. And then what they'll do is they'll outcompete you. They'll be able to sell their product cheaper. And then all of a sudden you say, what happened to our company? Well, we should have hired somebody to do the stoichiometry. And of course, every one of those chemical corporations, they have chemists that work for them. Every one of them, you get that? Okay, so let's take a look up here. Let's review a little bit. Uh, this right here is, uh, you don't have to memorize the name of that. This is an organic compound. That's a carbon compound. And this is called uh, propane. And that's what you see in barbecue grills and that kind of stuff. But propane is going to be burned. What's burned means combined with oxygen, doesn't it? And what, what are the products of a complete combustion? What are the products of combustion? We had that in the first semester. Carbon dioxide and? Excellent. See that? Now, when I write these out, <clears throat> we also have a skill that you learned called balancing an equation. And we use coefficients to balance, don't we? And so what we did is we balanced the equation. There are 10 oxygens here. 6 plus 4, that's 10. 8 hydrogens, 8 hydrogens. 3 carbons, 3 carbons. So tell yourself, don't, don't even think about doing stoichiometry unless you have a balanced equation. All right, everybody get that? Now, there's one thing I really like about stoichiometry. It's like a little puzzle, and I don't know if you like, like to solve puzzles, <clears throat> but the thing that's bad, let me tell you the bad news about stoichiometry. If you make a mistake on step one, you can make all your numbers off. You get it? I hate that. It's too bad. You just got to be careful. You get it? You can't make a mistake when you first start. You get that? If that's supposed to be 2.27, don't, and you don't have that, every one of these numbers will be off. So you just say, all right, I'll be careful. I can do it. Okay, <clears throat> so now here's what we do. <clears throat> um, if I start with this right here, and I want to know how much of this is going to react with it, I can't go from grams of that to grams of that. And why not? Because there's a tree in a way. That was a chemistry. You, you missed that joke. It's, it's a great joke. Anyway, so the reason I'm doing this, and you don't have to draw the tree after this, I just want you to tell yourself, I can't do that. I can't go from grams to grams. But what I can do, I can dig a tunnel down into the mole world where moles live underground, and then I can t go anywhere I want. I can go anywhere I want in this problem. You see that? All right. So what we did is, um, the first thing we did is we said, okay, tell me in words, what do you want to do? And you say, I want to change grams of propane into... I'm in the mole world, right? Moles of propane. So let's take a look. See my given? I'm going to change grams of propane into moles of propane. Now, what I did is I spent a little time over here doing my equivalents. What do you know about propane? Well, one mole of propane is that many molecules of propane equals how many grams. Now I'm all ready to go. And what did you say? Get rid of grams of propane, change the moles of propane, a one, a 44. And everybody in here should be pretty good at that, right? Are you pretty good at this? Are you sure? Okay, great. That's, that's great. If you can do this, you can do this chapter. Now, uh, and anyway, what happens is we get 2.27 moles. Uh, now, try not to ever go below three sig figs. You get that? Don't round that to point two or two. Don't do that. 2.27, you get that? Now, what I want to do is I want to go from here to here. Now, if you can say it in words, you'll know how to do factor label. Watch now. Change moles of propane into what? I'm still in the mole word, aren't I? Moles of oxygen. You say, what? How can you change that? Okay, this is something new. This is something new. When you go sideways in the mole world, 
now you finally understand why, why these coefficients are important. God said, not me, God said one mole of propane will not react with one mole of oxygen. What will it do? One mole of propane needs what? How many? You got to help me. Five moles of oxygen. I didn't do that. That's chemistry. That's God's work. Okay, now, so watch. Change moles of that into moles of that. So here's my given. Now, what do I want to get rid of? Get rid of moles of propane and change it into moles of oxygen. Now, where do I get the numbers? I do not get the numbers like I did before. I get it from the coefficients. So make a little note to yourself that these come from the coefficients and they have a name for that. It's called a mole ratio. On the test, that's one of the questions. What do you call the ratio of uh, moles, or one kind of moles? Now, that's called a mole ratio. You get that? So we're going to multiply by the mole ratio, and look what happens. If you had one mole of that, you better have five times more moles of that, don't you? But what if I don't have one? What if I have 2.27? Well, that number better be five times bigger than that number. And that's what this does. It multiplies by five, doesn't it? And when I show you the shortcut, you'll say, I get it. You go from here to here by multiplying by five. Okay? Now, now we have this number, don't we? Now, we got to go up. Now, we go up. In words, you say this. I want to change moles of oxygen into... And stay with me, okay? Moles of oxygen into what? Grams of oxygen. If you know in words what to do, then you can do it. Here's moles of oxygen. Change it into grams of oxygen. Well, then I use that. There's equivalence, can don't I? And by the way, in this chapter, we won't be using this. Got it? We did last chapter, didn't we? In this chapter, I won't even be using this. I'll be using this a lot and this a lot. And I'll be using the coefficients. Now, what we did, uh, and that's my lesson, <clears throat> but when I got done with the lesson, Sierra, we got done with the lesson, I had this group of three people. They had to do the same question, except I wanted to find moles of that and grams of that. And then I had another group find moles of that and grams of that. <clears throat> now, did you guys finish? Oh, you did not. Really? Did you finish? I thought you did. Okay. Did you finish? Okay, so I need the numbers, okay? Can you give me the numbers here, uh, Daniel? Uh, tell me what your group got for moles of carbon dioxide. Uh, we did uh, water. Okay, what did you get? Uh, 163.40. Wait, that's grams, I'll bet. Uh, look, at, moles. look at your labels. I want moles of water. Oh, 9.08. Okay, and what did you get for grams of water? Okay, now, how about the group that did carbon dioxide? Do you have moles of carbon dioxide? Um, moles is 6.89. One more time. 6.89. Okay, and in grams? Um, 299.64. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Sarah, even though you weren't here to do that, <clears throat> what you could do is the same, here's what you do. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> if I told you to find this number right here, what would you start out with your given? I could start with that, couldn't I? Couldn't I? I could. And I'd have to go step one, step two. See, I could do that, couldn't I? Uh, but if I know I did that right, could I have started right here and simply gone from moles of that to moles of that? Now keep looking at your face. I gotta tell me, you gotta let me know what's going on, okay? As long as I feel like I figured that out correctly, could I go from this number all the way over to here? And I could do it in one step, couldn't I? And then I'll do one more step, I come up here. All right? Um, <clears throat> if I knew that number was correct, could I go from here over to here? I can. I just look at the coefficients, don't I? All right. Are you okay with this? We're going to do another practice problem and see if everybody's uh, on in tune with me. But before I do that, I'm going to ask you to do something right now. I want you to take this number and add it to that number. Okay, let's tell me what you get. <clears throat> Too slow. What's 363 plus 100? Okay, 463. Okay, now. <clears throat> <clears throat> what's 
What did you just notice? Now I noticed that I started with how many grams of reactants? How many grams of reactants were there? 463. Now what I'd like you to do, I want you to add these numbers up. I can't do that one so fast in my head. Okay, the mass, this mass of this product and the mass of that product. So add these up and tell me what you get. So 299.64 plus 163.44. Just raise your hand if you have it. As soon, as soon as you get it, let me know. Yes. What? 400 what? Even? Or is that point something? Is it? Even, but I mean, I just. Or 463.8? What? What'd you get? What'd you get? Yeah, 08. 08. Okay, now, can I tell you something? <clears throat> we had a little bit of rounding, but do you know what this is? This is called the law of conservation of matter or mass. It means if you started with this many grams of reactants, how many grams of products should you get? So if you're doing a stoichiometry problem and you wondered, did I make a mistake? Try that. Add, how long does it take to add those up and add those up? And if they're really close, if they're really close, you probably did it right. You get that? If, it's, if this is 463 and that's 450, you've made a mistake. Everybody get it? So if you wondered if you're doing your stoichiometry problems right, all you have to do is add those up and add those up. And if they're very close to each other, you probably did a great job. You all right? Okay, we're going to do another problem. Um, is everybody okay with this? All right. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do... I'll show you how to start this. <clears throat> All right, well, I'll show you how to start this, and then we'll go ahead and do some more. Um, we'll do some more on this paper. So we may be able to do a lot of these. All right. So now this will actually be a homework assignment, and I'll give you a, a nice, a nice uh, homework for it. But you do have to show your work. Everything you do on this paper, you have to show your work. I'll show you the shortcut tomorrow, but I don't want you to do shortcuts to this. All right. Let's go ahead and put your name on it, and we're going to do problem number one. Let's do problem number one. Um, is everybody ready? Okay, now, an apple pie needs 10 large apples. So blah, blah, blah. See, what? Wait, you got this all the wrong book, Mr. Feeney. This is not chemistry, but you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. We're going to write a balanced equation. Uh, 10 uh, large apples plus what? Two crust um, plus one tablespoon of cinnamon uh, yields what? What does that make? What does that make? An apple pie. How many apple pies? one apple pie now you know why the author is doing this we don't have to look at chemicals to figure this out now here's his question he says how many apples are needed to make 25 pies are you ready are you ready okay so let's try it what we're going to do is uh we want 25 here don't we this one says, if you have 10 of those, two of those, and one of those, you can get one apple pie, right? Usually the one's not written. Everybody know that? The one coefficient's not written? Okay. You can get one apple pie. Now, my question is, we want 25 apple pies, right? So let's try that. 25 apple pies is what we want. So let's try that with our given. And they want to know what? They want to know how many what you need. 
how many apples. Now I know you can do this in your head. I'm just trying to show you how to do it with factor label, okay? What label has to go away? Apple pies. Apple pies. And what do you want to replace it with? Apple uh, large apples, right? Is that right? Okay, now, where do I get the numbers? And what I have is I have a 25 right here in the mole world, and I want to know what would be that number there. So what I'm doing is I'm actually in the mole world trying to figure out um, what this is going to be. And I already know you can do it in your head, right? But watch what happens here. When you go sideways in the mole world, you look at the coefficients. And what do you see here? For every one apple pie, you need what? 10. And now, what happens? What's the final answer? You need 250 large apples. Now, can we? Can I tell you that even though that was a simple one, it gets more complicated. Get that? So don't 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 shove me off and say, "Why am I spending my time doing this?" Uh, now here's what here's what I got messed up the first time I learned this material. See these numbers here? That's the balance equation, isn't it? But then somebody said they gave me 25 moles of that. I said, "What do you mean 25? I thought you had to give me one." I didn't understand what they meant. I was too naive. I didn't understand it. This is the way that it normally works if you start with, if you want one of these, right? But guess what it really means? It means whatever number that is, like a one, this number has to match it, this number has to be two times bigger than that number, and this number has to be 10 times bigger than that number. So what if this is not a one? What if it's a 25? Then what, tell me what this number has to be. Do it in your head. One, one, matchy, matchy. Ready? What if this is not one? What if it's 25? What's this have to be? Say it out loud. 25. And what's this have to be? 50. And what's this have to be? And what you just did is called the mole ratio. You went sideways in the mole world. You get that? All right, you try the second one by yourself. All right, you try the second one by yourself. And I know that some of you, when I told you, you have to know how to write formulas. Remember that? And some of you figured out, oh, I bet I don't. I bet you do. Two moles of potassium chloride and three moles of oxygen are what? Uh-oh. What does produce mean? What side of the arrow are these going to go on? They said they're produced. Two moles of what? Potassium. How do you write potassium chloride? Now, everybody in here should know how to do it. You look at the periodic table. Potassium is plus one, right? It's in group one. What about chlorine? Where's chlorine on the periodic table? Is that minus one? Okay, so I'm okay on that, right? Two moles of potassium chloride and three moles of what? Of oxygen. And if it's just the element oxygen, what do you know about oxygen? It's diatomic. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Now, we're not done yet because what does it produce from? What do they start with? The decomposition of what? Can you write out Can you write out what you think it is before I put down here? The decomposition of two moles of potassium chloride. Oh, they gave it to me. They gave me potassium chloride. Hee <laughs> hee thanks. Everybody see that? Now, is that a balanced equation? Can you check to see if it's balanced or not? Watch two potassiums, two potassiums, two chlorines, two chlorines, two times three, that's six oxygens, three times two, six oxygens, yes. Now, remember, now we have a balanced equation. Now I'm ready to uh, do whatever they want me to do. What do they want me to do? You guys got to speak up a little better. I, I, I got to have you um, more engaged, more engaged. What's that say to do? Uh, Madison, tell me what? Tell me something. What do they want me to find? Okay, now, remember the tree and all that stuff? I'm not going to draw the tree, and I'm not going to draw tunnels, but I always put my moles underneath here. You see that? It says, I want you to find how many moles of oxygen. I'll put a little question mark there. How many moles of oxygen are produced from what? 
12 moles of this stuff right here. Everybody see that? All right, so let's do, uh, let's, now again, I will show you the shortcut, but not today. What's my given? Kyle, help me out. What's given? Of what? Say it louder. Yes, very good. Now that's my given, is that right? And Kyle, keep going, you're on a hot streak, ready? What do I want to convert into? What do they want me to find? Okay, so see that? Everybody see where I'm going? Do you see where I'm going? All right, now where do you get your numbers? When you go sideways in the mole world, where do you get numbers? Do you know? Where do you get the numbers when you go sideways in the mole world? No guess? Okay, guess? Coefficient. Yes. And the coefficients are turned into a what? A mole ratio. So here we go. We want to get rid of this label here, right? Moles of KClO3. And you want to con you said you want to convert into what? Moles of O2. Now, anytime you go sideways in the mole world, the numbers come from the coefficients. Good job. May good job. Now. Watch, in the balance equation, what number should I put here? Look at it. Da -da, da -da -da -da. God said for every three moles of oxygen in this equation, you'll get what? See where I'm getting the numbers? All right, go ahead and put that in your calculator <coughs> and see what you get. Everybody, I want everybody to tell me if you, what you got, okay? I'm going to go around the room. Just tell me what you got. And again, this is an easier problem, okay? But if, if I have trouble with the easy ones, then I have to stop a little bit. All right, Aurora, what would you get? 18. 18? What would you get? 18. 18? Now, this is not peer pressure. You actually got 18, right? What would you get? 18? 18. Did you really get 18? Okay, let's try it. Uh, first of all, 12 times 3 halves equals what? It should be 18. So I, I found it. Now, this thing called a mole ratio, look right here. I'm going to show you uh, tomorrow when I show you the shortcut. You'll say, now I get it. I know the way the shortcut works. Do you see that number 2? Do you see that number 3? Isn't this number bigger than that number? So whatever I put down here, this number here better be bigger. Do you know how many times bigger it has to be? Three halves. One and a half times bigger. Did you know the number three is one and a half times bigger than number two? Isn't it? Take two dollars and say, what's one and a half times two dollars? Uh, wow, that's three dollars. It is. Well, anyway, guess what? So if I don't start with a two here and I start with a 12, this number has to be one and a half times bigger than that, doesn't it? One and a half times bigger than 12. Now, if you just use factor label, you don't have to do all that thinking I just did. Uh. All right, so if you use factor label, you don't have to think that much. It does it for you, doesn't it? All right, let's try it. Um, go sit with somebody, sit with somebody, and I want you to do number three and um, you can sit with two people or three people, either one.
Now, what I'm looking for is, and you have a partner with you, right? Do you, are you setting the problem up right? Can you do, I want you to be able to do the long cut before I show you the shortcut. Now, do you, do you guys agree? What did you both write as your given? Did you, what did you write down as your given? 14 moles of what? Potassium chlorate. Now that's over one, right? So you have that written down? Now, then you had to multiply it by a thing called a mole ratio. And what were the numbers you used in your mole ratio? Yes. For every three moles, and show her where that comes from. For every three moles of O2, uh, you have to have two moles of potassium chlorate, don't you? And that came from the, uh, the coefficients of the balance equation, didn't it? All right. Now, if you put that in a calculator, it should come out to be... All right, um, everybody ready to give me your answer? Everybody ready to give me an answer? Not yet. Yes, you are. There's three of you there. Are you kidding? Wait, there are three of you there and you haven't figured it out yet? You guys. I finished it and they're still going. Oh, okay. All right. Now, I'm not going to show you the answer yet. I want to see what you got. What'd you get? 21. 21, what'd you get? 21, you sure? What'd you get? 21. 21. Beer pressure or did they make a mistake? All right, here we go, watch. Now, you should have written out this as your given. Did you do that? And you said, I wanna convert that into moles of oxygen. And so see this label here? That's why it's down here. And that's the one I want, that's why it's up here. And where do I get numbers? Where do I get numbers when I go sideways in the mole world? And May knows. Coefficients. Coefficients. And for every three moles of O2, in this equation, you only eat two moles of potassium chlorate. And this comes out to be 21 moles of O2. Now, I'm gonna tell you something that you're not gonna like. I'll bet some of you did this problem and you didn't write all your labels out. You think you're smart. You're gonna pay a price for that one day. If I would put the labels on there, okay? If you don't know what labels go there, you don't really know what you're doing. So if you have 21 and that's all you have written down there, you already made a mistake. If it says 21 moles of O2, you're doing the right thing. I can show you that my work, everything cancels out except for what? Moles of O2. All right, let's do the next one. Now, this one, um, this is a little bit harder, okay? This is a little bit harder, and it's gonna take a group of you to do it. Two, mo two molecules of hydrogen react with one molecule of oxygen to produce two moles of blah. How many water molecules? Oh, wow. We are going to use 6.02. I bet we are. All right, let's try it. See if we can do number four. And then what I really want to do is get to number five, six, and seven, or number one, two, and three on the next section. You know, this is a little bit. This is a little bit harder. This is a little bit harder.
Okay, this is a little bit harder, okay? And if you get stuck, I'm okay with that. If you get stuck, I'm okay. We'll get you out of being stuck. Okay, I'm going to stop everybody for a minute, okay? I'm going to stop everybody for a minute. Now, I want you to uh, stop and look up here. I want to see how far you are, okay? First of all, whatever's happening in the, in the small world, the mole world tells you the same thing's happening. You get that? This could be read two different ways. It could say two moles of that reacts with one mole of that to make what two moles of that. Or in a tiny world, it could say two molecules of H2 react with one molecule of O2 and make two molecules. And that's why the mole concept is so important. Now watch what happens here. The given was this guy here. If you have that written down first, you're, you already started off right. But where are you going? They want you to go all the way over here and do molecules of water. Everybody look at me for a minute, okay? Why don't I just go from molecules here over here? Why don't I just go from here to here? There's a tree in the way. And all I was trying to show you with that lesson is you can't do that. You have to get down into where? Get down in the mole world, then go across and come back up. You get it? Now, if you didn't understand that part of the lesson, wait a minute. If you don't understand that part of the lesson, then you're going to be lost the rest of the time. So watch what I'm doing here. Ready? Change molecules of O2 into what? Moles. Now, does everybody have this set up? Okay, now what do you know about oxygen? Uh, one mole of oxygen is the same as what? It's the same as what? 6.02. Now, I want to show you something here, okay? I'm not, I don't want to stop, wait, wait, look at me, please wait. I don't want you to stop and write the answer here, okay? I don't want to do that right now. I'll tell you what, I'm going to write the answer, but I'm not going to stop. Can everybody tell me what you're getting out? You know, I don't know if you remember everything I tell you, but when you divide by a scientific number, you better put it in what? Parentheses. Parentheses. Let's try it. This divided by that, and tell me what you got. But don't write it over here. We're going to write in the box, but we're not going to go anywhere else. What do you got? Put in the calculator, and uh, I need somebody to volunteer and tell me what you got. Three what? Three point three. Two. Three point three zero. Three point three two. Okay. Ten to the negative one. Okay. Now, can I tell you something? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it out of scientific notation. I'm gonna take it out of scientific notation, and go ahead and, and put point three three two. Can everybody go ahead and put that down there? Point three three two. Now, this is what I want you to do differently than yesterday. I could write that down and start a whole nother one, but I already know where I'm at. I'm here. Now, what do you want to do next? Instead of writing it down over here. Hello. Okay, thank you. All right. Ms. Bella, you got to sign up for some reason. All right. Let's work hard for another eight minutes, okay? Look right here. Uh, instead of me stopping and writing the answer down, I wrote it down in the box, so didn't I? But I want you just to build another conversion factor and tell yourself, I want to change what into what? I'm going to change moles of O2. If I get rid of moles of O2. And I want to change it into what? Look at me. Say it. Say it in words. Moles of water. I'm telling you, if you can say it in, wa in water... 
if you say it in words, you'll be able to do the math. Now, watch me. When you go sideways in the mole world, where do you get your numbers from? Coefficients. Here we go. And for every for every one mole of oxygen, you get two moles of water. Now let's go ahead and put that in the calculator. See this? See the coefficients? All right. So here, for every one mole of oxygen, you'll get two moles of water. That's where I got those numbers. Now I can tell you right now, this number here is going to be twice as big. So I'll go ahead. You put in the calculator, but I'll bet you're going to get this. Is that what you got? You said this divided by that, and you left it in your calculator, didn't you? Then did you multiply by two? Now, did you get 0.664? Did you get that? Oh, okay, I lost you then. Or maybe I made a mistake. Are you? Did everybody in this room get 0.332 here? Okay, now, so then if I go from here to here, it's already in my calculator as 0.332, then the next thing I should have done is multiply by two. I know this number times two is 0 0.664. Did you get something like 0 0.664 here? You did not? You did. You did not? I have to know when, you, did you get it? Julia? I looked. Did you do this divide by that yet? Yeah. And did you get this number or not? Mm -hmm. Okay, multiply that times two. Okay, now, now everybody stop for a minute. Now again, I wrote the number in the box, but I'm not going to stop here. I'm just going to build another conversion factor. This is very important, okay? We're, we're, at, we're at a very critical space right now. Tell me in words what you want to do. Change what? Say it. Moles of water into what? Isn't that what they want, molecules? Okay, so watch. I want to change moles of water into molecules of water. Now, what do you know about water? Let's go over here. This is from last chapter, and you're certified. You should be able to know how to do this. One mole of water is that many molecules of water equals that many grams. Is that right? Here we go. Uh, one mole of water is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, here we go. Tell me the final answer. Uh I'll bet, I'll bet I know what it is. I think I can do this in my head. I need to know what you got though. What'd you get? Oh, it's, it's, so far, it's not working for you right now? Oh, am I in your way? Okay. Uh, we really need, wait a minute. We really need to finish this, okay? We really need to finish. Um, can you tell me what you got? Your table back there. Give me one person who, what'd you get? Four. Uh, does it say E? Is there an E somewhere? Four times. Oh, we can't leave that out. What's your answer? I cleared it. Four times 10 to the what? Okay. All right, what'd you get? What'd you get? Third, yes? That's correct. What did you get? I got that. Did you get? Uh, yes. All right. Now, can you, can everybody look at me for a minute? I, I keep saying that, but I, uh, when you guys are down here, I don't know what's going on. Do you understand how all I have to do is keep track of where I'm at here? This is like a map for me. And then I can just keep building a factor, a, a conversion factor. You see how that works? If you can do this, you're a real chemistry student. But I want you to be able to do that. Now, tonight, here's what I'd like you to do. Um, I'd like you to try three problems, okay? All I want you to do is try three problems, and then I'll, uh, I'll have you come up, and maybe somebody can put it on the camera tomorrow. But I want you to try three problems with nobody helping you, and if we can get all three of those right, I'm going to feel really, really good. And then I'll show you the shortcut. Yes? Yeah, uh, you're under number one, two, and three. Yeah. So we did the first four. We're going to do one, two, and three. We're going to do number one, two, and three next. 